17 at 7 p.m. Mr. Darren Lowry? Here. Mr. Reynolds? Here. Mr. Lindsey? Here. Mr. Lighty? Here. Mr. Rick Lowry? Here. Mr. Lethley? Present. Mr. Craver? Yo. Show off. <laughs> Has to be present or yes or here? Oh, it has to be? Yes. Oh, okay, yes. Okay. No, present or here? <laughs> present. Thank you. All presently. Present. Present. <laughs> Thank you, sir. All right, if you'll stand, we'll have tonight's invocation by Councilman Aaron Lighting. Let's bow our heads. Dear Holy Father, we thank you for, uh, for the uh, opportunity for us to come together. Um, Lord, we ask that you just guide our hearts and our minds, Lord, that would be uh, pleasing to you. Just so of everything we do, glorify your name. And we ask that you uh, protect the men and women who serve this community and this country, Lord. And uh, we ask that you bless this town and uh, just be with us all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And the Pledge of Allegiance, we'll use the flag here tonight. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, need actions on the regular schedule council meeting for July 17th, 2017. So moved. Second. There's a motion by Mr. Craybach and a second by Mr. Lefler. Yes, sir. Council, any questions, discussion, comments? Yes, sir, when you're ready. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lindsay? Yes. Mr. Lighty? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Lethley? Yes. Mr. Craybach? Yes. Minutes past seven to zero. Thank you, sir. Moving down to communications, none tonight, correct, sir? None. And then moving on to Bridges City Manager report. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of the public. I'd like to share with you the city manager report. Uh, under informational items, we do have the city website upgrade coming. Uh, council members and administration will have headshots taken by Andrew Green Photography, uh, and that will go on to the new website. Um, I do need to find out what is the best schedule for everyone to get these pictures taken. Um, and also need to set some dates. So just keep that in mind. Probably at the next council meeting, I'll ask for a little bit more solid. I know, Mr. Reynolds, you might want to get with Andy on the weekend or something. Yeah. Um, and then I'm, I'm going to talk with Andy how he wants the best to handle it. Do we just do as many people at once, or do you go in our own individual time? But I do want it to be uniform across the board. What's going on our uh, website? So I'm recommending this black top circle so tie. Keep it simple. Okay? Great. Awesome. And moving on board to zoning appeals, we have a variance case set for August 17th at 535 p.m. here at the Smith Park Shelter House. It is to review, discuss, and vote on building expansions for two area businesses. Uh, playground equipment, um, and next meeting is uh, August 9th to determine the next steps. Uh, this year we will be getting baby swings, and next year we will be looking at inclusive playground equipment for those with disabilities. Uh, disability. Uh, also, on, on lines with the playgrounds, we will be ordering new mulch for various display, various playgrounds around the city this year. And also, we have the tree trimming going on. I did put this on our city's Facebook page. Uh, so we will begin moving tree limbs within the city's right-of-way and sidewalk height limits. Uh, privately owned trees are responsible of the for, for responsibility of the homeowner. The city is responsible for curb lawn trees. The city will provide the service free of charge to residents. The project is in August 14th and will last approximately two weeks. Uh, attached with this uh, management report is codified ordinance 660.16 that does govern uh, trees in the city, trimming of trees in the city. If you'd like some more information on this program, please contact Mr. Kiko at 845-9492 or hkiko at newcarlisle.net. And that is all I have for the management questions for the city manager. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Appreciate it. Thank awesome. you. All right, moving down to comments from members of the public. If anyone has any comments or questions tonight, we'd ask you to go to the podium, your name and address, please. Dale Grimm, 114 South Main Street. You have before you this evening resolution 17-16R. 
which uh, determines the appropriation apportionment of the local government funds for Clark County, Ohio. You'll notice that the uh, Clark County gets 42.71 percent. Uh, the city of Springfield gets 48.18 percent, and the city of New Carlisle gets 0.7182 percent. When this came before council last time, I believe it was three years ago, mm -hmm. we found it a bit unjust. So we quizzed the county about it, trying to find out how they came up with these figures. Nobody knew. So we made a documents request, a, a records request, for any documents regarding the apportionment of local government funds. And we were told that since the auditor at the time was so terrible at record keeping, they would never be able to find them. That there were boxes upon boxes upon boxes stacked in hallways in various places throughout the county building. We spoke with the new auditor, and she said it will take in excess of a year to sort out all the boxes and boxes and boxes of documents that, by the by, were in hallways where anybody could come by and take a look at. Last time this came before council, one of the council members asked the law director at the time, what would happen if we did not pass this? And the law director shrugged his shoulders and said, you won't get the money. Well, we found that is not true. What you're doing here is agreeing to this distribution. If more than half of the uh, agencies on this list do not approve this formula for distribution, then it has to go back to the county, either accept the state's distribution or come up with their own uh, apportionment, their own percentages. Since uh, the city of Springfield gets 48%, but they are only 43.45% of the population of the county, and since the city of New Palau gets 7.7182%, but yet we are 4.15% of the county, I would strongly suggest that we reject this resolution. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Graham. Thank you, back. Mr. Rector, Mr. Bridge. No. Thank you for coming up and saying that. I also, too, did speak with them this morning, and I agree with everything you said and that was told to me. However, what was told to me is, is it doesn't matter if we pass or fail this, we're still going to get our money. But the only, and I don't know what information was given to you, but was given to me by David Crew at the auditor's office is, it doesn't matter if we all vote it now. City of Springfield, since they are the largest city in the county, they are the ones who have to agree to change it. So it doesn't matter if every one of these people we hear about knows on the screen knows what she has the next day is the way it is. And that's the information I was given. According to the Ohio Revised Code, 50%. Mm -hmm. So the city of Springfield has just as much vote as, as anyone else. the village of Catawba. Okay. okay. So I did put some notes in there. They have another meeting on August 25th at 9 o'clock in the morning. I will be attending that. Um, they have been using this formula since the late 80s. ORC, Ohio Revised Code, Section 5747.53, deals specifically with the alternative formula that they are using. And then Ohio Revised Code 5747.51 deals with the statutory law behind it. So uh, I literally just got this information late today. I will be researching this statute and finding out what we can do to, to change it because I think that we're all in agreement that we should have a little oh, yeah. bit more money in our pot. Uh, my understanding of it is based on population and how much you serve, not only your city street, but how many people come into your city as well, which would explain why the city of Springfield would probably get a little bit more, but even though their population only crops 43%. So, Mr. Graham, thank you so much, because something that I want to do is go to this meeting on the 25th and find out what it takes to actually change it back to find out what the numbers would be under that other form. Mr. Reynolds? Just to follow up with uh, Dale's comments, yeah, I mean, we talked about this last time, and there's a, a resolution that follows this that also shows the fact that New Carlisle once again gets hosed by Springfield in the county. We continue not to get money. We have a library ordinance uh, that's coming up where over, I think it was, if I remember, it was almost 80% or more goes to 87% currently goes to uh, the uh, Clark County Library Fund, only 13% goes to New Carlisle. Well, there's only two library branch, branches in the county, which is New Carlisle's privately uh, nonprofit library, and then the county library. So again, we're continually getting hosed. And I mean, I remember that meeting with Mr. Pizarro, if 
you don't vote for this, mm -hmm. you won't get a penny of it. Well, uh, I did that due diligence that Dale had done, and I plan on voting no on this just because we constantly continue to not make the money. Uh, a good example is here, we're getting 0 0.71, and then Bethel Township is getting 0 0.97, and they're, what they cover is differently than what we would cover, and they're getting more money. And naturally, it would be Springfield, and if I remember correctly, it was Springfield Township. So, again, we're not getting the money that I believe we just deserve, so, or it's not fairly appropriated. So. Thank you, sir. Mr. Lauer? My question, I wish the law director was here, is why is this in a, and I agree with everything Mr. Grimm said, but why is this in a resolution form? A resolution is law. Because it's not a law, I guess. That's what I'm saying. It's I, not law. That's the only it's issue. just that either we are in agreement or we're not in agreement. They can look at that and say, we don't care. It's a resolution. Right. And, you know, why don't we make something in the form of a word? That is law. This is not. This is absolutely nothing. Should all vote no against it. It's you know, it's it's a resolution. It's not law, and I think we should say no. We're not in agreement with it. Thank you, Mr. Lawrence. Mr. Walker. You're not the only one that has. I think you, you know, you and I talked several months ago that this was coming, and you said, oh yeah, that's that's right, that's coming. You know, sometimes because you're not the only one. Bob Bender said did the same thing. Tim Jones did the same thing. It's been forever. No, let me. I know, it's been it. forever. Yeah. Right, it's the been, county sent us this to pass. It's nothing that I did. They had sent us a yeah, copy of the yeah. resolution to put on, so they got well, probably right. So an ordinance, though, I don't think an ordinance would hold any kind of weight to the county at all from us because the county would over Trump us probably if that has a work on rural state. That no government agency has a rule over another one. Yeah, well, that's just out of state. No government agency, can t uh, the attorney general can't tell a council member what to do, and we can't tell the governor. No one oversees anyone. The people who oversee elected officials are the people themselves. Right. We, our we, con state constitution. Through an ordinance, we can't dictate to Clark County that they pay us higher percentage. You can't do that through an ordinance. No, but we could lobby our you county commissioners lobby. to do it. Well, you, I mean, they're the ones you who vote no on this, and then you go. Let me go raise the cane. Oh, yeah. I'm all about raising some cane when we deserve the money we need. So. Is this something that maybe you guys should hold off or table until we get that opinion? Well, we have that. done that. If you vote no on it, we don't get the money? Because we have two different stories. So I think before you guys vote no, we need to find out if you vote no, we lose the money or not. But you can't lose it. It's a resolution. It's just a word of yeah, we're not. We have well, Mr. Graham, I got here and said that if you vote no on it, then we don't get the money. Uh, no, he said the opposite. He said the opposite. He said the opposite. He said the opposite. told us that. He said he said, said if you vote no, we're going to lose the money and the sky's going to fall. I'm sorry. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And that's what we were told before him, even, Mr. Lauer. Yeah, I'd just like to say, and you know, whatever it is, it is. Good luck, Mr. Reynolds, talking to the county kind of commissioners. Are they not the one who told you we would have five thousand dollars for shelter house? Yeah, one of them a while ago. Yeah, that was. Yeah, and then what happened? Happens. They come back and said, "Guess what?" <laughs> so that's I mean, right. good luck with that. Yeah. Well, that's what we got to hold them accountable. I mean, we have one of our own up there. I mean, if he voted for the budget that allowed this to happen, he voted for the budget that allowed the Clark, uh, the libraries to happen. We got to hold our people responsible, regardless if they might listen to us or not. That's what, that's what our job is to do as citizens. Well, we have you know, tabled on. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I agree with the rest of them. If, if we vote no on this, and if all seven of us went to the uh, commissioner's meeting, and all of us raised cane with them, we might get their attention. I don't know. I, I don't know what the rest of the council thinks about that. Can, can I make a suggestion? Absolutely. That we take into into this motion and second, get it out on the table for further discussion. Right. Yeah. Uh, we're meeting to death right now. We're yeah, you're right. Yet. We're not even there yet. You're right. <clears throat> yeah. All right, Mr. Collier, it's all you. Oh, no, we're still up on the public. I apologize. <laughs> Resolution 1715, our introduction of public hearing and action tonight. Uh, a resolution declaring the, the, the necessity of approving the streets of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio, by lighting them. 
Make a motion to accept resolution number 17-15R. Second. Okay. <laughs> and an explanation for this resolution. This is a yearly housekeeping ordinance that we do that um, basically says, all right, we will assess your property for the street lighting that we have going on in front of your house. And it's based on how much street frontage that you own. Council, any other questions? Mr. Reynolds. Just to clarify, what, did, what would that cost be in dollars and cents or cents at all? About 92000 Well, I mean, for individuals, not. It depends on your street frontage. Okay. Yeah. So, so, like, if you're on a corner lot, you're going to pay a little bit more. Yeah. Because you have more inside yeah. of the yeah. street. Okay, uh, normal frontage, I think, is, I don't know, depending on what you're in, 16, 50 feet. You know, um, if I remember correctly, it's pretty, it's quite cheap. It wasn't. Yeah, it's not oh, yeah. crazy. Yeah, that's it's not even $1,000. Tell the citizens, yeah. It might be in one of the ordinances that's voted on next week, Mr. Reynolds, to be honest with you. I want to say it's is it something cents per I read it somewhere. It's 58 cents per front foot. Yeah. So, yeah, 58 cents. Mm -hmm. So every foot is 58 cents. Mr. Lindsay? Did that 58 cents go up from last year or not? No, I think it's about the same. It doesn't go up every year. Very rarely does it ever go up. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Council, any other questions? Can I ask a question? Sure. I have no idea what anyone is talking about because I've never lived in the city before. All cities do it. Sure. I mean, basically, if you pay for the street lights in front of your house, so it's based on how right in front of your house, but not in your neighbor's house. Yeah, yeah, it's all the it's, yeah. So if you have 50 feet of frontage on like from your front of your on your street frontage, and you know what street frontage is at all, like your front of your house, how much front yard you have, and how much is against the street. So if that's 50 feet. You times that by 58 cents, and that's what your responsible share is for for the street line. per year. Per year. And you get a bill for that? No. Yeah, they assess your taxes. Oh, on your taxes. Yeah, it goes on your taxes. So or if you, if you look at they also have the opportunity, once it's posted, do they still do this? Yes, yeah, they can. Yeah, once it's posted, once it's passed, you can come in the city building and pay it early, because if you let it go get assessed your taxes, the auditors will put an additional fee on there. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. Short front yard, well, it's not feet, then you still pay. Whatever the, it, it could be 10 feet, it could be yeah. 5 feet, whatever your frontage is, you times that by 58 oh, cents. Okay. Yeah. Now I yeah. So if you look on your auditor's textbook, it should be a little charger for street lighting, and that's exactly what it is. Okay, yeah. thank you. Mm -hmm. Sir? Is that charged to everybody in the county? We have no street lights out. It's not charged for 20 feet. Okay. Make sure they put them up. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Collier, when you're ready. Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry. Abstain. Mr. Lethley. Yes. Mr. Craybock. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Lindsay. Yes. Mr. Light. Yes. Mr. Lowry uh, will be abstaining after because I don't have to pay it. I do live in Twin Creeks where it's not assessed out there. I never go to one because it's cool. Thank you. I've been reading up on my rules of council. It's going to be dangerous. Yeah. See, the thing is you learn your job before you take it. Well, I do that all the time. <laughs> when you're ready, Mr. Collier. Resolution 1716R, introduction of public hearing and action tonight. A resolution to approve an alternative method of apportionment of the local government fund of Clark County, Ohio. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Craig. I'd like to make a motion to have a table resolution 17. Second. Dash 16R. <laughs> I have a motion by Mr. Craybacher and a second by Mr. Rick Lowry to table resolution 1716R. Mr. Reynolds. Just before we table this, uh, what is this absolutely due to the county, just in case there was something were to come up? What do you mean, what does it do to the county? When we vote for this and we approve it, it goes to the county to say that, hey, we agree with you. What do they need it by? Do they ever tell you? I'll, I'll call them tomorrow and let them know they wanted two signed copies of this passing legislation. So um, our next meeting is the 21st and their next meeting is the 25th. They haven't even voted on this yet. At the county level, they're supposed to vote on it this morning. 
but it seems like they have a lot of questions for me, so I'm glad Mr. Green got up there and said that because I can collaborate what he said about nobody knowing. Uh, that meeting, uh, they're supposed to be having a meeting with, I can't remember who he said, but it was so they can all figure out what the heck's going on. Mm -hmm. and so I will be there on the 25th to figure out what's going on. I highly invite some council members to go along with me. The more people we have, hopefully the um, more we can maybe get their attention. Mr. Graham, I invite you to go to do what is that the newspaper, the 25th, 9 o'clock in the morning. And I'll send an email reminder out to everyone if you all want to know the time and date. Mr. Graham, would you like to know that information as well? Oh, you did. What yeah. time did you say, sir? I'm sorry? What time did you say? 9 o'clock, August 25th. Mm -hmm. Council members, I will, I will share this. I remember three years ago when we discussed this, and it was rather heated then. I think nobody showed up for the meeting, so there, there needs to be a show of force there. There needs to be a show of force, and quite frankly, there needs to be some understanding from the county about what exactly they're doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're authorizing these state funds and you're not sure of the formula you're using, you're not sure if it's even correct, you're not even sure to know how to use the other formula, and it sounds like what I've been told and Mr. Grin's been told are two opposite things. They need to those the laws and governments. The county is an extension of the state government. It is my expectation that the county government acts as a state agency and can <coughs> stuff before they start distributing these funds to random people with no logic behind it. I remember three years ago, pretty much the answer we received was that's just the way we've always done it. Yeah, we've always done it. <laughs> well, I have an answer for that. Okay. But they couldn't tell you how they did it. No, they couldn't tell you how they did it. They couldn't, they couldn't remember. No, they said they couldn't remember how they got it. Wow. <laughs> ready for a purpose of vote? Yes, sir. Uh, remember, this, this motion is to table, so that's what we're voting for. Uh, Mr. Leslie. Yes. Mr. Craybar. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Lindsay. Yes. Mr. Lighty. Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry. Yes. The motion to table 1716R passes 7 to 0. Thank you, sir. Moving on when you're ready. Resolution 17-17R, introduction <coughs> public hearing and action tonight. A resolution in support of changing the public library fund, PLF, dis disbursement formula in Clark County, Ohio. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Rollins. Move to approve resolution 17-17R. Second. <laughs> I think I heard the second from Mr. Leather. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it was a tie. It was a tie. I'll take the pick. So I, I, I take the one. Who the what? Mr. Lindsay. I heard it from the first one. I don't care. Who's taking the second one? I put Mr. Leslie. Okay. Both at the same time. Okay. Um, just a little explanation of this ordinance. I'm going to let Councilman Reynolds explain this ordinance. Um, we are discussing some of this. Uh, resolution. I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, we are discussing this matter, and he uh, asked about uh, introducing some uh, legislation for a council meeting. So I'll let him take it from here. So I was reading the Springfield News side, and there was an article about the disbursement of the public library fund. Uh, so currently, Springfield gets 89.3% of the money, and our library gets, um, let me find it over here, 10.7%. So what that does is, currently we have, we're, we're short-staffed, and we have different hours, and yet Springfield, just like in the last ordinance, is getting most of the money. So they went to the library board, the county did, or the new call library went to the county board, and they said, well, we don't really agree with your assessment. We're going to keep it things up the way things are. So they went to the commissioners. And the commissioner said, well, you need to go back to the county and the library board, which was just passing the buck. Uh, so they found out that in the state law, they can get all 19 municipalities and townships, so you know, the villages, the townships, and uh, uh, the county in itself. So what ended up happening is they need to get a resolution or a support memo from each individual entity. So Bethel Township's already signed on. I want us to join that effort so we can kind of get some more money for ourselves. It would allow us to hire uh, two full-time staff members. Beverly Gerson is in charge of the, li uh, the library here. Very supportive of it. Uh, she's going around trying to convince other municipalities. And I figured, what better municipality to help start this thing than New Carlisle, considering the library is right here in our hometown. And I grew I mean, we all live in this town. We all probably utilize the library at one point or another. Uh, so I think it's something that we definitely need to have passed. And one of the fun things about this is, is if they get all these uh, cities to sign on in townships, 
it's still going to have to go before Springfield City, which obviously benefits the most. So when that gets to them, we'll all need to show up there to voice our concerns with the Springfield City Commission. So that's what it is in a nutshell. Sure. Thank you, sir. Mr. Lindsay. Do you have the uh do you have a date for that meeting in Springfield, or does Mr. It, Bridge have it that would, date? It wouldn't be from Mr. Bridge or myself, it would be from the library, so I know currently they're trying to get all the other municipalities and townships to sign on, so I know they need to meet with the Ian and uh, City Council here shortly, so I know Ben's really busy trying to figure out her schedule with all the commissioners, and uh, sorry, as township trustees, and some of those townships meet just once a month, so okay. it's few and far between when you might see them or not, so. Council. Mr. Palmer. Mr. Craig Rocker? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lindsay? Yes. Mr. Lighting? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Lethley? Yes. Resolution 1717 RS 0. Thank you, sir. Dropping down to ordinances. Uh, let's see, one with action and five for introduction tonight, Mr. Collier. Ordinance 17-24, in action tonight, an ordinance establishing compensation rates for the city manager. Council? I'd like to make a motion to adopt Ordinance 17-24. Second. Is that you, Mr. Lyon? Yes. <clears throat> Here's the first. I was. Mr. Craig Walker, thank you. Second, Mr. Lyon. Uh, it's an explanation of this ordinance. Um, anytime that the city manager is going to get compensated, compensated or increase in that compensation, that does have to be approved by the city council. Um, I have been asked by uh, one of the council members to give a, just a brief update as to why I'm asking for this raise. Um, so I wrote a little something down, so forgive me for reading it, but I just want to make sure I get everything. Uh, but it says, since taking over in April 2015, the city has seen a massive turnaround in finances, administration, and work that's have, have, that has been completed. We have paved more roads than ever before, amassed a $500,000 surplus. Um, and as a city manager, I've personally saved $134,471.09 on a police contract with the sheriff. Um, refinancing two bonds for savings of $116,000. Reviewed our current bill with AT&T to save us $18,000. Um, and it's not just me, it's been a team effort from the administration to the to hourly staff to the seven people on that panel up there that guide my decision making. So I would like to continue this great things for the city. And I also would like to continue doing that in a team environment. But for those three simple reasons, which is why I feel as though I am deserving of a raise that I haven't had since I took over as city manager. Council? Mr. Kraybach, I just want to say, uh, I just want to add a couple little things to what you were saying. Also, it's only 1.2% per a year. year. So that's not really a whole lot, really. And, um, and your raise is usually based on the bargaining agreement. Is that right? There is a clause for all managers, not just myself, that you can only get 3.6% over the course of the union agreement, which is a three-year term. Um, so hourly or hourly staff get their raise every year, regardless of what the budget looks like. They all automatically get the 25, 35, 15 cents, whatever that little step calls for that particular year. Whereas my raise and the uh, manager raises are really just based upon how the city is performing at that point in time. The city's not doing well financially. We don't get our raises, but the hourly staff do. Mm -hmm. uh, so hopefully yeah. that clears and, that up. And in, um, in the packet in the last meeting was your evaluations. And I think, Mike, you added them all up, or somebody added, and it, was, and it was almost all fives. But uh, I, don't I didn't add them all up, I don't think. If I did, I, I forget. <laughs> okay. Who, somebody, yeah, they, they were somebody all, did. They were all, they were all high, high between fives and fours, so, you know. Councilor, Mr. Reynolds. Mr. Reynolds, I know we've talked about this a lot. Uh, the only thing I worry about, and I, I think we should table it just one more last time, and here's why, is we constantly talk about the income tax petition, and that either is going to be approved or not approved to be on the ballot here in, I think, a week almost now. And if it's up on the ballot and it passes, then we're all going to be hurting, and there won't be much of a budget left to handle. You know, I mean, it's only $2,300, I think is what it, what it added up to, but I remember a time when, uh, most of us were still here sitting on council. There's only 150 
some odd dollars in the bank. I don't want that to happen again. I think just seeing what happens with an income tax petition is going to be key for us. And I respect that opinion. That, that's the only, I mean, I, sure. we constantly use that as like, oh, we got to watch out for this. And I think, hey, but we got to watch out for it. It's literally coming up here, you know, in a week. It, well, actually, I don't know if it'll be a week or a month because we have a different guideline than the state does for petitions. We have a meeting on that on August 21st. Okay. At the Board of Elections. And I, I, I respect your opinion. And if that income tax credit passes, I'm going to want that raise even more because I'm going to do more work than what I'm doing now. And I'm definitely not going to want to do it for less than what I'm making now. Because people are, I'm not saying this like it's going to happen, but you, we can assume if we have to go on there, we're going to make some massive cuts. But you need a manager. You know, so I'll be doing way more work for the same amount of price. I completely, I completely appreciate city finances, um, but it is a small raise in the, in, the, in the grand scheme of things, you know, but if that thing goes on and it passes, there's going to be way more things we're worrying about than additional twenty-three or $2,400 that the city manager got. You got to understand, this is 17. I haven't had a raise since April of uh, three months, six months after taking the job, and that really wasn't a raise. That was the amount I agreed to do the job for. Which, if I talk in, in uh, politely remind council, is I actually end up having to take less because that amount went over the 3.6 for the union. So I've been doing the job for way less than I agreed upon doing in the first place. So um, that's why, one, I haven't really asked for a raise up until like the first time it came around when everyone was on there. Uh, but I work hard and I go home and I work. And my personal life is out the door because I've been doing job as a planning director, write my own letters and doing a bunch of stuff. So I can't only, you, as a human being, you get rewarded through your work by being compensated for that. And for the longest time, I've done my job far less than I agreed to do it on for this city to get it to where we are today. Um, and I understand we have the income tax possibility of that, but there's always going to be possibilities for some wrong about it. You know, but at the end of the day, again, if that goes on, we're going to have to cut. So I'm going to be doing a lot more work than what I'm doing now. But I appreciate you being responsible with these taxpayer dollars. One, one thing I did want to ask you, and we've, we've kind of mentioned it and kind of beat on the bushes of the union, ties you down. It really does. I mean, you can't get your increase. Even the, even if we want to give you it, we can't give you the percentage that you may deserve because the union ties you down. I know we're not with those contract negotiations yet, but it's in two years. Do we have any tactics or plans to challenge them on this? Because I have never heard in my entire professional life working in state government where management is tied to unions. I have never heard of that. I'll be honest with you, something's going to have to be aggressively done. Now, how my mind works is I'm a cost benefit guy. If it's going to take us a ton of dollars to get this thing taken out, I would have to really consider the cost analysis on the cost benefit. Um, because I will say that um, I tried to take it around the first time negotiations and it didn't budge. Something's going to have to be done for this simple fact. Everybody that we employ here is a hard worker. Every single one of them. I don't care if you're an hourly staff or you're a member of management. They are very hard workers. What happens is this. We as managers don't get our raises every year. Very rarely do we get your raises every single year. It doesn't happen. What does happen is they get their business. Another thing that they can get is overtime. Right now I have two hourly people making more than their manager. And I have a huge issue with that. So basically, if that's not addressed, what's going to happen is that gap is going to continue on close. They can go out and get overtime. And it's only a matter of time before one of those superintendents starts making more money than their manager. And that's why it needs to be addressed. I am not eligible for overtime. Mr. Kicker is not eligible for overtime. But I can't even limit the overtime they get because of the agreement we have. We cannot alter schedules around to take overtime away from that particular position. position. So we will have a heart to heart with the union rep and their union steward, and we'll say this is the situation we're going on. Um, I don't think they'll budge on not having some sort of guideline in there. My understanding of it was before the union was in place, and the reason why the union is in place now is because I guess the city manager had told the hourly people that there's no money for raises. But he turned around and gave all the managers like $15,000 raises. So I think that's why there, it's there. Uh, but we do need to 
to move forward and make that make, make that adjustment in there to allow for uh, the managers who have the more harder job responsibilities and tasks that we get compensated for such. Mr. That's all for you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Owens. Mr. Leffler. I will say that this is kind of equivalent to what you see in the school system, though. Uh, the, when the union negotiates a contract, <clears throat> when the union negotiates a contract in the school system, the, the union employees get whatever that's bargained for. There's uh, secretarial staffs and administrative staffs that are not part of that union, but whatever they get, the union gets, they end up getting similar or less. Uh, so it is kind of equivalent to what's happening in the school system. Oh, yeah, it doesn't make it right, but yeah. it is. It, it does happen. I, I, the 3.6 they have over the course of three years is just, it's not even cost of living. Right. I mean, it truly isn't. Mm -hmm. right. You know, mm -hmm. I, I would expect them to come back and say some, some sort of cap, which is fine, but it needs to be something that's one respectable and we can actually use. Uh, one last thing I forgot to say. Uh, I also agree with, with trying to hold down expenses and stuff, but at the same time, I look at this as compensating for what's already happened, not what we're looking forward in the future. And as what Mr. Bridge said, uh, there, there's going to be a lot of different things that come up against uh, what we're going to come up against in the future, and we can't look at it narrowly, I don't believe. But uh, in, in respect to what we're talking about, it's not that amount, a large amount of money. Yeah. Break that down. Piggyback what you're saying, Mr. Lovely. It's not that much money. And when we look at all the money you have saved, I, I think it's well worth it. Um, I mean, if we're really going to nickel and dime everything, everybody up here should probably look at what we get paid. I mean, if we're looking at that small amount of money, then uh, and you're putting in way more hours than we are up there. So, absolutely. Absolutely. I think you deserve it. Um, thanks for staying progressive. Thanks for updating our parks. You know, that's something that, uh, you know, for someone like me with small kids, we can take advantage of it. It's a lot of fun. That's something we can actually see happening. And that's a uh, direct result of your hard work. So thanks. Keep it up. Keep the budget cuts. Um, I know it's tough to go on everything, but I know your team has a list, and you guys are hopefully making it shorter. There's always things to improve on. But, um, yeah, just keep up the work. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lighty. Council, anyone else? Uh, I'll just say a couple things, and I, I, can, uh, I can say I think personally that Ethan makes a good point. Uh, but my big concern is I don't like the turnover rate of city managers the city has seen. It's, it's, too, it's too often. I, I, I'm not sure how long Bender was here. I think he was... Does anybody know off the top of your head? Six years. Six years. Six years. Six years. Okay. Five or six. And Ken, yeah. a handful of years, and, you know, and so on. I want to see a city manager that's good, like Randy, and stay here and retire. You know, we've got somebody good. I don't want to lose them over, you know, what is it, 800 bucks a year, whatever it may be, which really I think is a, a slap to his face for the amount. Of, I mean, I'm not saying we should be handing them a $10,000 raise a year, but, uh, <laughs> but you know, it, for the next, each year for the next three years to keep him here and keep him happy and keep Nukalau's wheels turning in the right direction. I, I'm all for it. Uh, I de like I said, I definitely understand where Mr. Reynolds is coming from, though. I just I want to slow down the turnover rate of our city managers. If we if we've got a good one, I'd like to hold on to him as long as possible, and that's my personal. Opinion. So, I think that's all we got. So, Mr. Collier, you're the man. <clears throat> Mr. Ricklauer. Absolutely yes. Mr. Lethler. Yes. Mr. Craver. Yes. Mayor Lauer. Yes, sir. Mr. Reynolds. No. Mr. Lindsay. No. Mr. Lighty. Yes. Seventeen dash four passes five or two. Thank you, sir. Moving on when you're ready, Mr. Collier. You can read off the introductions as they fall. Bear with me, we have five introductions tonight, so we'll take a little more. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Or the 17 25 introduction tonight, public hearing and action on August 21, 
2017, an ordinance determining to proceed with the improvement of certain public streets within the corporate limits of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio by lighting them. Ordinance 17-26, introduction tonight, public hearing, and action on August 21, 2017. An ordinance levying assessments for the improvements of certain public streets within the corporate limits of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio, by lighting them. Ordinance 17-27, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on August 21, 2017. An ordinance certifying to the Clark County Auditor and authorizing placement on the tax duplicate certain delinquent utility accounts for collection with real, real estate taxes. Ordinance 17-28, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on August 21, 2017. An ordinance certifying to the Clark County Auditor and authorizing placement on the tax duplicate certain uncollected weed and or grass cutting fees for collection with real estate taxes. Ordinance 17-29, Introduction tonight, public hearing and action on August 21, 2017. An ordinance certifying to the Clark County Auditor and authorizing placement on the tax duplicate certain uncollected nuisance abatement, abatement fees for collection with real estate taxes. Oh, I'm sorry, we, were, we didn't hear you. Can you do that one more time? <laughs> what was the third one? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Collier. And moving on to other business. You want me to read it or you want? If you do that, I appreciate it because I'm trying to, to, to file through here and sign off on the order and stuff. Alrighty. Moving on to other business. Congressman Warren Davis will hold a mobile office hours at the city building on the fourth Tuesday of each month from 1.30 p.m. until 2 p.m. Crime Watch meeting will be Wednesday, August 9th at 6.30 p.m. Smith Park Shelter House. And executive session none tonight. Sir, you've got a meeting tonight also on your mind. Here. Who is it? Who is it? Who is it? Who is it? It does say here in the record. What? I guess they might have two things going on at the building one day. What's going on? You're saying that we're, we have a double meeting that night? No. I don't, think so. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't hear what he said. On the under informational items, playground it says meeting set for August 9th, but it doesn't say where or when. Oh, that's my meeting. Oh, that's his personal meeting. That's my personal. Meeting. <coughs> no. No. Okay. He's meeting. So, council, any other questions or comments before we move on? Or end the uh, school's coming up. If you guys want to look for uh, something to donate, stop by Bethel Church United by First Time Methodist Church. Um, donate any kind of school supplies or groceries. Thank you, sir. Mr. Uh, school's coming up. If you're looking to donate school items, <laughs> you can drop them off at Security National <laughs> Bank. We're collecting all kinds of school uh, uh, items. We'll be donating them to uh, uh, Neutral Island Elementary. Mr. Lindsay, come on. I move we adjourn. All right. <laughs>